Hey everyone, welcome to Cloud Native Live, where we dig into the code behind Cloud Native. I'm Brad, I'm a CNCF ambassador. I uh, work as the head of platform at BASIC, and I'll be your host tonight. Every week, we bring a new set of presenters to showcase how to work with Cloud Native technologies. They will build things, they will break things, and they'll answer your questions. In today's session, I'm super excited to announce uh, Kat and Mohammed. They're presenting on the Kubernetes 1.30 release. Uh, this is the official live stream of CNCF, and as such, is subject to CNCF code of conduct. Please not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of the code, and basically respectful for your fellow participants and presenters. So, uh, with that, I will hand it over to you, Kat. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. I am happy to be here. Um, Leading a release is a lot of work, and it's not just me that does that work, but uh, I think I speak for all of us when I say that uh, I am glad that it is over and I can have a break. So <laughs> welcome to the Kubernetes v130 uh, release webinar. The name of this release is Uwubernetes. If you were reading that online and wondering how to pronounce it, it is Uwubernetes. Uh, my name is Kat. I was the release lead. I am also a lead open source advocate at Dell, and I am joined by my enhancements leads, Mohammed. Mohammed, do you want to say hi? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Mohammed Azza Saleh Sapku. Just call me Mohammed. Uh, I was and I was the enhancement lead for version 1.30. I work as a team team lead and senior cloud native engineer here at Elasticis in Sweden, and I'm also a CNCF ambassador, and happy to be here. Thank you. All right. So like I said, the release doesn't happen just like in a bubble. It's not just me. It's not just um, Mohammed. It is quite a lot of people that make it work. So this was the Uwubernetes release team. Uh, we are built out of five release sub teams, an emeritus, emeritus advisor, my release lead shadows, and then the two people responsible for handling the branch management. So. Huge thank you to each and every single one of these people. Um, in each of these sub teams, the first person listed was the sub team lead. So uh, especially thank you to Mohammed, to Kristen, uh, Rashan, Paco, Viom, and Drew. Uh, we cannot do this without you. Uh, this was our cute logo. Uh, that is my cat, Espresso. She's 21 years old. And this logo was commissioned from Kate Efimova, uh, Kathy Mochi on Twitter, if you want to go check her out. So huge thanks to Kathy Mochi for the logo. A summary of 130, we had 45 total enhancements make it across the finish line. Uh, 10 of those were net new features, alpha features. 18 of them were graduations to beta and 17 were graduations to stable. If you want to go look at a complete list of those enhancements, you can go to that bit.ly link down there. Um, that will also show you all of the enhancements that tried to get in in the beginning and were lost to add uh, code freeze or something for whatever reason, which may be a little sneak peek of uh, what you might see in 131, because they usually do reapply. So let's get into the major themes. These are the biggest and most impactful changes that came through with 130. And I will start by handing it off to Mohammed for the first one. Uh, yes, the first one uh, was graduated to a stable in 1.30 and it's called Robust Volume Manager uh, Reconstructor after Kubelet restart. So basically when the Kubelet is restarted, it loses uh, track of all volume uh, it mounted for running parts. This process was not perfect before, and uh, this enhancement tries to fix some bugs and some parts of the kubelet. So uh, there are no changes or any API uh, in any API or structure of data or anything else. This feature can be disabled or enabled by uh, new volume manager reconstruction uh, feature. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, this next one is also stable. All of the ones at first are going to be stable. And this is to prevent unauthorized volume mode conversion during a volume restore. Um, each of these slides does list like a link to the actual cap if you want to go read like the technical details. And for a lot of these, you are going to want to go read the technical details for like specific implementation information, things you need to know before you use it, because there simply is not enough room on these slides for like a deep dive into each of these. Uh, 
keps. But um, so the control plane prevents unauthorized changes to volume modes when you're restoring a snapshot into a persistent volume. And you'll need to grant permissions to the appropriate identity principles if you need to allow that kind of change at restore time. This feature flag is enabled by default in the external provisioner version four and the external snapshotter version seven. The volume mode change will be rejected when creating a PVC from a volume snapshot unless you perform the steps described in the urgent upgrade notes section for both of uh, those versions. So do go check the documentation for this particular feature. Mohammed? Uh, yes, uh, and this one is again stable. Uh, so uh, pods are currently considered uh, ready for scheduling once they are created. So, and this can degrade the over, overall scheduling throughput. These enhancements actually let the scheduler know when the pod is ready for scheduling. Uh, when all the resources are, for instance, when the, all the resources are provisioned or, uh, and the pod can be bound. Uh, yeah, uh, check the link and see the full description. Yeah. Alrighty, another stable, uh, the min domains parameter for pod topology spread constraints will graduate to stable this release, which allows you to define the minimum number of domains. This feature is designed to be used with cluster autoscaler. If you have previously tried to use this and there weren't enough domains already present, pods would be marked as unschedulable and the cluster autoscaler would then provision nodes in new domains and you'd eventually get pods spreading over enough domains. Yeah, uh, and this one is the last stable one, I believe. So personally, I really, like this uh, enhancement because it was one of those uh, smooth and fast enhancements, uh, but actually it does not impact uh, Kubernetes cluster user or admins. And basically the Kubernetes, the main Kubernetes repository is now using Go workspace. So downstream consumers should make sure to see the changes. Check the uh, enhancements. Thank you. Yeah, now we're into the betas. So with beta features, if you're not a super experienced Kubernetes user, uh, beta features are enabled by default most of the time, but can still be disabled with a feature flag. Stable uh, enhancements are usually not able to be disabled with a feature flag. So just keep in mind, this is on by default, you can turn it off. But the first beta in this version is node log query. To help with debugging issues on nodes, Kubernetes 127 introduced a feature that allowed fetching logs of services running on the node. To use this feature, ensure that the node log query feature gate is enabled for that node specifically, and that the kubelet configuration options enable system log handler and enable system log query are both set to true. With 130, this one graduates to beta. Uh, yeah, and the next beta is uh, just implementing a validation ratcheting for custom resource definitions. So generally authors understand to increment versions when they are adjusting the field layout of uh, a custom resource definition, but to do so when only modifying uh, value, uh, value validation is more trouble than it is worse. So this enhancement enables CRD authors to confidential, uh, confidentially add new validations and update the new schema without breaking any work. Awesome. Rad. Contextual logging. Uh, this is one that a lot of people were really excited about. Uh, contextual logging advances to beta in this release, empowering developers and operators to inject customizable, correlatable contextual details like service names and transaction IDs into logs through with values and with name. This enhancement simplifies the correlation and analysis of log data across distributed systems, significantly improving the efficiency of troubleshooting efforts. By offering a clear insight into the workings of your Kubernetes environments, contextual logging ensures that operational challenges are more manageable, marking a notable step forward in Kubernetes observability. Woo. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, as of today, different Kube proxy implementations are binding the uh, external IPs of the node balancer service to each node. Uh, so this enhancement pro proposes a new way to make these features configurable. And by this, 
giving the cloud providers a way to disable the behavior of this behavior of uh, queue proxy and also it's in beta okay. yay uh we've got two that are paired i think so convenient that uh we're trading off here the first up here is structured authentication configuration uh, Kubernetes has had a long-standing need for a more flexible and extensible authentication system. The current system, while powerful, has some limitations that make it difficult to use in certain scenarios. Uh, for example, it's not possible to use multiple authenticators of the same type or to change the configuration without restarting the API server. The structured authentication configuration feature is the first step towards addressing these limitations and providing a more flexible and extensible way to configure authentication in Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, as Kat said, is the second part. So this enhancement basically enables Kubernetes admins uh, with more structure config to define the authorization uh, chain for Kube API server, uh, Kube API server, and allowing multiple webhooks uh, with well-defined parameters and enabling fine-grained control like explicit deny authorizer, and it's in beta. And now we're into the alpha features. So alphas are off by default, but can be enabled with a feature flag. So none of these are going to um, like jump up and surprise you if you upgrade to 130, but they are there if you want to try them out. And please do try them out so that we can improve them over time and eventually graduate them to beta and stable. Uh, the first step here is speed up recursive SE Linux label change. Kubernetes 130 extends support for SE Linux mount option to all value volumes as alpha with a separate feature gate SE Linux mount. This feature gate introduces a behavioral change when multiple pods with different SE Linux labels share the same volume. Uh, see the cap for details, please. There's quite a lot of uh, implementation detail on this one. We strongly encourage users that run Kubernetes with SE Linux enabled to test this feature and provide any feedback on the cap issue. Please, 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 please. Thank you. Uh, and the next alpha is uh, recursive read-only mounts. Uh, so the current read-only uh, volumes are not recursively read-only and may result in uh, compromise of data. This enhancement in utilized run C's RRO bind mount option to make mounts the real read-only bind mounts. Uh, and it's alpha again. Cat. Uh, the job success and completion policy. From Kubernetes 130, index jobs support the spec success policy to define when a job can be declared succeeded based on succeeded pods. This allows you to define two types of criteria. Succeeded indexes indicates that the job can be declared succeeded when these indexes succeeded, even if other indexes failed. Succeeded count indicates that the job can be declared succeeded when the number of succeeded indexes reaches this criterion. After the job meets the success policy, the job controller terminates the lingering pods. Neat. Uh, yeah, the title, this the title of this enhancement describes itself completely, but uh, this enhancement introduced a new field called uh, traffic distribution to Kubernetes services specification for expressing traffic routing uh, preferences. Uh, and it, it's really awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up is storage version migration. Kubernetes 130 introduces a new built-in API for storage version migration. Kubernetes relies on API data being actively rewritten to support some maintenance activities related to at-rest storage. Two prominent examples are the version schema of stored resources, that is the preferred storage schema changing from V1 to V2 for a given resource, and encryption at rest, rewriting stale data based on a change in how the data should be encrypted. Storage version migration is an alpha API, which uh, was available out of tree before. It is now in tree. Um, that is the final uh, major theme included in this release. Uh, there are quite a lot of interesting caps in uh, v130. In, in particular, one of the oldest caps in the Kubernetes project finally merged with this version, uh, cap 24, which is app armor support. And that's been hanging around for like four years <laughs> or longer, which is pretty cool. So um, I do encourage you to go um, look at 
the complete list of enhancements in this this release. Um, for the first time in a long time, there's also no like urgent upgrade notices for this release uh, in the release notes, which is which is fun. Not necessarily a good or a bad thing, whether uh, that's there or not, but it is it is fun that we've got one um, for the first time in a while. So please do go check out all of the enhance enhancements that are included in this release. Go read the release notes because we have a whole team that works very hard on writing the release notes and making sure that they're good and functional and useful. Um, and if you're at all interested in getting involved in the release, the 131 release cycle has already begun. But if you join Slack and keep an eye on the SIG release channel, you will know when the shadow application opens for 132. And eventually, you might lead a release or lead the enhancements team and end up doing one of these webinars. Um, <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's a lot of work, but it is fun. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me or Mohammed? I don't have any questions coming through at the moment. Um, That's okay. In terms of the release team, how did it go this year? So this is the second release where you merged the uh, bug triage. Um, this was the first one. Oh, this is the first one. So that was yeah. the release signal now, right? Yes, it is release signal now. So for uh, the audience, if you've never been part of the release team and aren't like intimately aware of how this works, um, release signal used to be two separate teams called bug triage and CI signal. And we found that after we switched to managing the enhancements using the GitHub projects board, instead of this like big, messy, super confusing, very stressful spreadsheet we used to use, it was literally just a Google sheet. Um, they, they had very little to do. Um, so we merged them into CI signal to create release signal. And this was the first cycle where we had that merged team. It went pretty well. We found that release signal um, is busy all cycle long. They don't really have like um, a busy season and a slow season like a lot of the other teams do. Um, comms and docs are both like very busy at the end of the cycle and not so much in the beginning. Enhancements is very busy in the beginning of the cycle and has straight up nothing to do at the end. Um, so <laughs> it's unusual for a team to be just like busy, busy, busy the whole time, but release signal is. Um, it went well though. This was the smoothest release we've had in um, quite a long time. I had a, an excellent team to work with. That's great. Um, this was also the first cycle where we had a real deadline for docs. So uh, previously the last deadline for docs was not treated as if it was a hard deadline. Um, enhancements has hard deadlines. So there's an enhancements freeze and a code freeze. And if you're going to miss either of those deadlines, you have to send in an exception request and be approved. Otherwise, your enhancement is pulled from the release. Docs didn't have that. There was a deadline, but it wasn't, um, people weren't treating it like a deadline. So it was often very difficult and stressful for both the release docs team and for SIG docs from a, a review standpoint. So um, technically, if your enhancement has user facing changes, um, in order for your cap to be considered complete, you must document those changes. It is not optional in the Kubernetes project. Um, anything that a user can see or interact with has to be documented. So I instituted a docs freeze. And if it's determined that your cap requires documentation and you don't provide them by that deadline or fill out uh, an exception request, we will pull your enhancement. And uh, that was a pretty huge improvement to the, the functionality of both release docs and SIG docs. It uh, really took a lot of pressure off of them. Um, all of the cap owners did what they were supposed to do. We only had one exception request and they only needed like an extra day. So um, it worked really well. It was a, a stressful change. We were a little worried that people wouldn't uh, pay close attention to that, but they did. <laughs> so, and Kat, what's next for you? So uh, you've you've led this release. Will you take a break and then come back later to be EA? Uh, I will probably come back to be EA, 
but I did not leave immediately like most release leads do uh, because I am now the release team sub project owner alongside uh, my emeritus advisor from this release, Grace. So it's a, a new role within SIG release leadership. We are now responsible for the release team. We're, we're the release team's parents now. <laughs> and Mohammed, were you, um, you going to apply for another team? Uh, yeah. Time? Now, uh, in the V132, uh, I'm released in shadow. And oh, cool. I'm really excited to learn more. You'll do great. Thanks. Well, yeah, th thanks so much. Like, I know how much uh, hard work this is in the release team. So, um, yeah, we, we really appreciate it. And, um, and thank you for coming today. Yeah, thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah, All thank right. you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming to the latest episode of Planet Live. And we'll see you at the next one. Bye bye. Bye.